Hello, I'm Clint with the Brace Tool. Uh, I'm going to show you how to assemble our uh, hydraulic sandline cutter uh, to set it up for cutting cable when you're uh, in need of fishing operations on a wire line So anyway, we'll start out with the, uh, the firing head. It's a pressure activated firing head. Uh, we have a piston with two O-rings on it, which go inside the piston housing. Several pin holes, which allow you to vary your pressure rating required to uh, set it off. There's your fishnet sub, a firing pin, and a fishnet for retrieving it from the well. So what we'll start with is we'll put the firing pin into the piston. It takes a quarter twenty set screw to hold it in place. Screw that in. Make sure it's tight in there. We'll install the fishnet onto this sub and we'll install our fishnet, our retrieving fishnet onto the piston. We'll thread that on. Clamp the fishnet in a vise. Use a pressing wrench to tighten that on. Tighten our set screw in the fish neck to retain it so it doesn't fall off. Now I find the easiest way to set this up is to install your piston and everything into your sub and thread it in using the threads to push your O-rings in, into the sub. Once they're in the sub, we can clamp this in the vise, leaving the uh, shear pin holes exposed. Now if you take a quarter inch pin punch and lay it in beside the fish neck, add the striker pin fish neck, press them in to align your rings, you'll find that that perfectly aligns your shear pin holes with your piston. Uh, for this instance, we'll use 330 seconds brass. Uh, each 330 seconds brass shear pin in this tool uh, requires about 470 psi of pressure to shear it. So once the pin's installed, that'll make it so your piston cannot travel back and forth and uh, accidentally set off your. Fire uh, I like to use a chisel just to nip off the uh, excess brass shear pin. And there are uh, six holes here. If you used a uh, drill rod for shear pin instead of the brass, each pin would be uh, rated for about 1,000 psi, giving you a 6,000 pound psi uh, maximum. I just install two pins this time. Now we can take our um, piston, our firing pin housing, or sorry, our shell chamber, and install our shell. It's a 4570 rim fire shell. Drop it in there. Make sure it seats. If it doesn't go in easily, do not force it, do not hammer it. Do not make an impact with the primer, as it is a loaded firing shell. Uh, it should be treated just like a rifle shell. A uh, small brass disc goes on the top that creates a seal. And we'll set that off to the side just for a moment. We'll uh, install our displacement piston, which displaces the hydraulic oil in our body to make the cutter function. O-ring faces up towards the top of the tool. You want to push that into place just below the surface of the hole because there's a little rubber disc that goes above it. The rubber disc should be flush with the top of the hole. Uh, the rubber disc is just a cushion for when the shell goes off uh, and uh, 
so it doesn't damage your, your displacement piston. Okay. Now we'll install the shell chamber onto the firing head. Once this is installed, as I said before, we'll treat this as a loaded gun. Caution should be used at all times now. Any impact with the primer in this with the firing pin will cause this to detonate and go off. Now we install the displacement piston housing. Thread that on until your O-rings are completely covered and seated. And as you can see, there's a recess here. Um, so a little bit of space in between there. When we fill this tool with oil, you have to fill the body quite full because you leave yourself a, a gap of air and you want no air in this tool when you're done. So I like to take a good gob of grease and fill this hole up a little bit. Get rid of some of that air, dead air space. Press it in so you don't have a bunch of air pocket in there. Okay, for the time being we're finished with the firing head side of this. Now we'll work on assembling the cutter body with the cutter assembly and the crimper. Uh, this gets filled with colloidal fluid as a shear, or a, sorry, a, a equalizing valve so you can bleed your air out of it. Uh, the top hole is for your crimper, the bottom hole is for your cutter and cutter piston. So I will proceed to assemble this. I put the cutter in first. Uh, the cutter has a cutter piston. You want to lay the slots sideways and align them with this small hole on the side which a shear screw goes in that holds your cutter blade in. So I try to align that so it's nice and straight and lined up with that hole so you don't have to do a bunch of twisting on the tool once it's all assembled. And it may take a little tap to get everything started in there. You don't want to hit it too hard and damage your hole. Make sure it's seated right at the bottom of the tool. And then your cutter has a small hole on the side which aligns with your cutter uh, or with your shear screw groove hole. Um, you can take a punch and make sure it all aligns properly. The shear screw is just a small, got a flat slot in it. I use a small flat screwdriver to install that shear screw. And because it's brass, you don't want to torque it in, over torqued, or else you'll have trouble getting it out. So, uh, just thread it in and you should see it enter the cutter body as you thread it in, or the cutter blade, sorry. And as you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but in there you can see the tip of the shear screw going into the cutter blade itself. It should go past the body and into the blade and hold the blade in so it will not fall out. It doesn't have to be over torqued as I said um, because it's just there as a retainer and it will shear when you fire the tool. The crimper, uh, we make three different styles of crimper. This one is for half inch and nine sixteenths cable. This one is for uh, anything smaller than three eighths cable. And the blank is used typically when you're running it in two and three eighths tubing because the crimper doesn't really isn't effective in two and three eighths tubing because it has nothing to crimp against other than the tubing wall and it won't hold um, when it goes on or when it goes off. So when you run it in two and seven eighths or larger pipe, you use this sleeve which slides over the body and the cutter and the crimper both cut against the, the uh, cutter sleeve and uh, helps you to crimp to your line. So the same thing, there's a small hole there uh, and a shear screw hole there. Align those before you press it in. Slide it into the bottom. Install your shear screw in that hole as 
well. And the same precaution should be taken not to over torque your shear screw and damage the little ears and the flats, making it hard to remove. Okay, now that that's installed, we can proceed to fill our tool with oil. No, we can't. Uh, we need to install our uh, bleed screw. It has a quarter inch ball bearing that drops in there and seats against the, the taper at the bottom. A shear screw, or sorry, a bleed screw, which holds the ball in place. And because it's a fine thread screw and a ball seat, you do not need to over torque this. Uh, you feel a touch bottom, give it just a little snug so it holds the pressure in, and then you can clamp your cutter body into your vise. At this point, you take your fluid that you're going to use for your displacement and fill the tool. Now, I'm going to use automatic transmission fluid. Um, we'll fill it up. Fill it up to about, uh, so there's about three or four threads left showing in your cutter body itself. Um, because you're going to want to get all the air out of this tool. Uh, and there's still a little space where we've put the grease in. So we'll start installing this. And you'll see some oil start to weave out of here as we start to uh, compress the oil. You don't want to uh, over torque this at any time, just turn it hand tight and once you start to feel your oil pressure build, um, you can shear these screws prematurely by forcing it. So you don't want to do that. You want to, once you feel oil pressure and see the oil just start to come out of here, We'll stop, turn the screw upside down, pop it in the vise, undo your uh, bleed screw, which will allow oil and air to come out of your housing, out the bleed hole, and then you'll thread this in slowly watching to make sure that you're not getting a bunch of air out of there. As you can see, I'm still getting air, but I still have some room here. So, optimally, you, when you are finished screwing this in, you want to see a, a, a constant flow of oil out of this hole with no air bubbles. And once that's into the tight position, we'll close our lead screw, nice and snug. We'll tighten our, turn our tool back to the upright position. Off the excess oil. We'll tighten our, all of our connections. Make sure everything is good and tight. Nothing's going to come off apart when you drop it in the well. Okay, now this is really a loaded gun because if this was to go off, we're going to shoot our piston and our crimper out of this tool. So at this point, I'll turn it to face you. You want to align your groove in your fishnet with the groove in the uh, cutter body itself, which should turn because the only thing holding this is your shear screws. So you line those in there, and if you're cutting uh, 
half inch or 9 sixteenths cable and 2 and 3 eighths tubing, you could run this tool just like this in the well. Uh, there's not enough room for the cable to get up past your 2 and 3 eighths tubing, so this will follow it down to your cutter position. And uh, at that point, if you're able to, you can pressure up on the, the well uh, to overcome your shear pin strengths, which will drive the piston down into the firing pin, shell will go off into the piston and drive the piston into the column of oil, which in turn drives your punch, or sorry, your cutter blade and your primper out, cutting the line. Um, if you were going to use this in a uh, larger size pipe or, or whatnot, you can uh, use guides on the top of here. We'll put this will slide over here. You have to put it on before you put your fishnet on. This guide will go on there, hooks over the line, has a cap head screw that holds your line in, in place, and uh, just kind of keeps everything aligned on your tool. There are also guides for casing sizes. Uh, larger fishnets for casing sizes and uh, several other pieces of equipment available for this tool. Uh, if this tool is not uh, able to be set off by pressure because of well conditions or whatnot, there are drop bars that can be dropped down beside the line. Um, basically have some fins on them here depending on what size tubing you're in. Uh, you open up your well head, put this beside the line, line it up, drop it in the well, it'll travel down the, down the tubing following the wire that, that you're cutting and make contact with the top of your fish neck, shearing your pins and doing the same as pressure activating. I hope this video was helpful.